Well, it's been a very busy three hours at Jersey's IBA transmitter here at Bremont Point. And the end of a headache for the Independent Broadcasting Authority, who three years ago began what they now laughingly call their impossible task, that of finding the best route by which to bring colour to the Channel Islands. Starting point number one was, of course, Guernsey. They even thought of a boy in the middle of the English Channel. It was a special kind of American gyroscope, which did stay upright all the time, but that wasn't a very serious thought. What was serious was the thought of France, specifically Cherbourg, but that proved too difficult. Now, several UK television stations, and a new one being planned in Ireland, all use the same television channels. So there's the danger of interference. And the IBA have a new special kind of aerial called Sabre, which will be installed in Alderney, and which turns what they call a deaf ear to any interference. So we now get our colour pictures from Stockland Hill in Devon, via Alderney, to Jersey, and then on to Guernsey. Hundreds of people flocked into a marquee erected in the grounds for this morning's function. With the impressive backdrop of the transmitter, representatives of local businesses, the television trade, the broadcasting committees of both islands, press, television personalities, and members of the states, past and present, all viewed the surrounding paraphernalia of channel going colour with interest. There were diagrams for them to see, setting out the difficulties of bringing the new dimension here. There were engineers there to explain those difficulties. And later, there were speeches telling them what an interesting exercise it had been, one of achieving the impossible and defeating nature itself. But there were colour television sets there as well, proving that the job had at last, and successfully, been done. The culmination of the ceremony was when Chairman of the IBA, Lady Plowden, declared the service open. I'm not an engineer, so I have to um, take the microphone at the height it is. <laughs> Can I say how delighted I am to be here this afternoon and to be asked to open this. This is the end of bringing colour television to all the companies which make up independent television. And it is enormous pleasure to be here, which is my second visit here, and to see this completion of colourisation of the independent television. It's quite interesting to note that on Friday we opened one in the Isle of Lewis. It is nice today that we're opening one in the Channel Islands. Many of you will understand everything that Howard Steele have said, including something called the Trotospheric Scatterlinks. <laughs> um, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as the authority is concerned, what one is anxious to do is that the viewing public should see the programmes which are produced both by the companies which are your companies, such as Ch Channel Television, and by the other companies which make up independent broadcasting, um, that they should see them um, in colour, which adds uh, enormously um, to the pleasure of, of viewing. So it was with enormous pleasure that I am theoretically pressing a button which is going to declare that colour television has now come to the Channel Islands, and I wish you every pleasure in your viewing in the future. Thank you very much. With me are the two presidents of the both islands broadcasting committees. Could I come to you first, Conseil Pepino St. Angelo, as president of Guernsey's broadcasting committee, how do you view this day? I think the excellent very way. First of all, I must thank Lady Plowden and uh, Brigadier Collingwood for our invitation to come here. What has impressed me tremendously is the fact that you have spent, at least that uh, the IBA has spent, 540,000 pounds to bring color television to Guernsey. And Jersey, of course. But I would like the, the, I'm talking about Guernsey, I would like the Guernsey public to realize the amount of money which has been spent to bring color television to Guernsey. And I think it is in every way admirable. And today we have seen quite a lot already. And I congratulate the IBA. And I must be impartial as the president of the Bro Guernsey Broadcasting Committee. 
Yes, you do have to be impartial. Senator Shenton, an impartial view from you on today. Two things. First of all, the advent of colour, long overdue, but gratefully brought in very early by IBA and channeled to a degree that uh, has proved without a doubt the, the benefit that this island and indeed Guernsey receives from such a station. And secondly, on a personal note, the fact that today, of course, I see colour coming to a station which was the brainchild and in fact the, the very inspiration of my uncle, the late Senator George Troy. So it's rather wonderful that I should be present on this occasion. May I also say in front of Concierge San Angelo that the wonderful cooperation that one has received from Guernsey in our investigations into broadcasting have been greatly appreciated, certainly by my committee. And if today is an example of that cooperation, what it can achieve, then I hope to see great things for the future for both of our islands. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you very Not much. How hopeful are you that your visit to the Home Office will bring about a favourable reply in reducing the licence fees? I think that um, the concierge, when we left the Home Office, expressed it greatly. This was a meeting which had to come. It was a meeting where the views expressed were received in a manner which can only bring us a degree of understanding on our problems with regard to broadcasting in the islands. And if we fail on the, the matter of the amount of money that we can save on licence fees, we have certainly gained in the spirit of understanding that our meeting with the Home Office people has achieved. And I'm grateful for that meeting, and I'm sure that it will prove a benefit to the future. I would like to endorse every word he has said. The only thing I would like to say is this, that they can dissimulate these very high civil servants. They can say it is not exactly impossible and words of that to that effect. But nevertheless, I'm sure that they will help us in every way they possibly can. Mr. Wicker, colour has come to channel today. As a Jersey resident, how do you think this will affect our viewers? Well, I mean, it's a colour television compared to black and white. It's, uh, it's, it's another thing altogether, isn't it? I mean, I, I know from my own programmes, when I go to a place like Rio, and our channel put Rio out again the other day in colour, when you see a carnival in Rio in colour, uh, having seen it in black and white, I mean, there's absolutely no comparison. Black and white is like a silhouette, you know, you don't see, you don't see real things, you don't see real people. It's another dimension to viewing. And, and once you've had colour, you're never going to go back to black and white. Impossible. That's on your documentaries. What about, say, sport, for instance? I think anything. I mean, any, I know that when, when I edit my programmes, they're always edited in black and white transmitted in colour, and when I see them transmitted, all sorts of new and exciting things happen. You do a programme on the Kentucky Derby, and you suddenly, you know, the chestnut horses and the gleaming flanks and the colour of the grass, suddenly you can't believe it, it's another programme. I think, is that the one I wrote? You know, good Lord, look at the scarlet, look at the silks, look at the, you know, it's, it's another thing. Is there a problem then when you perhaps edit your programmes in black and white, you might miss something just right? You, well, what, what tends to happen is that, is that you, is somebody is terribly, a colour is dominant and it pulls your eye towards it. And the other day I was, I was doing an interview in Australia and I was walking down a street and just behind us there was a, a, a sort of van and we didn't bother us, I was just talking to this girl and there it was. When we saw it in colour it had scarlet and brown and orange and all, and it, one thing you looked at. So this is a great disadvantage, actually, if you don't, if you don't edit in colour, because it has a new sense of domination. I mean, suddenly they're going to be very concerned about what you're wearing, you know, or, uh, or the, or the colour of your tie or something like that. <laughs> Does this mean, then, that you're going to be watching more channel programmes now? Well, it means I'm going to be watching channel televisions now for the first time, and it's very exciting for me, because up to now I've had colour for the last four years, but I get it from the Isle of Wight. I get it from southern television, so I know everything that's happening in Bex Hill, <laughs> and I don't know anything that's happening in Jersey. So I'm very excited. At last, I'm going to see you.